you're a 90s kid, congratulations. You desperately need to shut the fuck up. It's not the 90s anymore, and there's more to life than Clarissa Explains It All, Nicktoons, and Tamagotchis. Nobody's reading your Tumblr, and you're not better than everyone else just because your yo-yo had a clutch in it. Move on. Of course, the 90s was a golden age for video games, and nothing made after December 31st, 1999 is really worth playing because it's all garbage. The Mortal Kombat franchise is part of that golden age, birthed as it was in the 90s, sliding forth from the womb of Midway games like a baby with a penchant for ripping out spinal columns. While the original uses excessive violence to paper over the cracks of what is a pretty poor fighting game compared to the likes of Street Fighter 2 and World Heroes, its sequel was a solid contender, able to hold its own against the competition, and the third game in the series was even better, adding combos, vicious bosses, and even more fatalities to the mix. They also included a modestly dressed female character with a deep and intriguing storyline whose name is not that she's not she's not real there's no there's no character like that there's no characters like that in any fighting game ever but as technology progressed, arcades, and indeed home consoles, moved more towards 3D rendered graphics. With games looking bigger and better every day, Mortal Kombat would have to compete. And so, in 1997, Midway released the very first 3D entry in the series, Mortal Kombat 4. Moving away from photorealism and towards polygons allowed the developers to ramp up the violence significantly. Mortal Kombat 4 is staggeringly more gruesome than its predecessors, featuring the kind of casual bone-breaking, slicing, dicing and impalement one usually only expects to see at a hockey match. Mortal Kombat 4 found its way onto home consoles the following year, with releases on the PS1, the N64, the PC and the Game Boy Color, but in 1999 a special edition called Mortal Kombat Gold was released as a launch title for the Sega Dreamcast. It's essentially the same game, with a bit of a graphical polish and a handful of new characters and locations from previous Mortal Kombat games shoehorned in for good measure. Returning after their one-game absence are Hatman, Wolverine, Pink Tits, Blue Tits, and Robot Scorpion, as well as an additional secret character, Red Robot Scorpion. And if you think the developers of Mortal Kombat see any of the female characters as anything more than just a pair of tits, then I'm sorry to hear about your recent head injury, and I do hope you make a swift recovery. These combatants, and I hope you can hear me trying to pronounce the K in there, return with the same classic moves and costumes from their previous appearance, except for Wolverine, of course, who's had his stomach stapled for what I'm sure are very good narrative reasons. On paper, adding these characters to the game is a great idea, and one that I'm sure the developers thought would make Mortal Kombat Gold the definitive edition of the game, but in practice, it doesn't work out quite so well. Their addition feels rushed and unfinished, with sloppy character animations that don't so much feel like they've been motion captured as they've been hurriedly done by an animator who's been told to clear his desk because they're moving him to a new cubicle in an hour and the game is supposed to go gold in two. They didn't even bother to record new vocals either. All of the grunts, moans, snarls and cries of blood-curdling agony from the five newly added fighters are lifted entirely from Mortal Kombat 3 and it shows. They're louder and of a lower quality than the Mortal Kombat 4 sounds. Also annoying is the lack of VMU support. The VMU, or Visual Memory Unit, is one of the more interesting innovations of the Dreamcast and literally the only good thing about this piece of shit controller. It's essentially a memory card that plugs straight into the controller itself, kind of like the memory pack on the N64, but the key difference is that this has an LCD display on the front of the thing, so when it's plugged into the controller, you've got a little display on the controller itself, which can be used to relay information like your health, or ammo, or it could show the game logo if the developers are particularly lazy. Uh, Mortal Kombat Gold doesn't even do that, it just shows a picture of a VMU. That is an embarrassing use of the technology, especially considering this was a launch title for the thing. A later reissue of the game would add VMU support, as well as fix a number of other bugs, glitches and issues, but the one thing they couldn't fix is the terrible pre-rendered endings for the game's new characters. The endings in Mortal Kombat 4 never quite reach the dizzying cinematic heights of, say, a You A Bowl movie, but these new endings are awfully written, shoehorned as they are into the game's pre-existing narrative, with animation that, again, feels awful and rushed. It's telling that Cyrax and Sector basically share one ending with a different outcome, as do Kitana and Melina. 
Although I'm sure there's some fedora wearing neckbeard out there who thinks that pink tits and blue tits should consider themselves lucky to get an ending to share at all. Some of the other enhancements are pretty decent though. There's a noted improvement in graphic quality over the other console ports, particularly in model detail and lighting, which would make Mortal Kombat Gold the best looking console port of Mortal Kombat 4 released, if I could end that sentence there, but I can't, because the new environments added to this version of the game are so poorly designed that when the camera pans up to watch a fatality, it often clips through the ceiling or a wall, meaning that we miss the fatality entirely. Given the choice between playing this game and having my own nails pulled off with a pair of rusty pliers, I, you know, I, I play the game, obviously. I mean, come on, let's, let's not get hyperbolic here. I don't care what James Rolfe tells you, no game is that bad. But this is a bad game, an awful, awful game, and coupled with the disastrous Mortal Kombat Special Forces released for the PS1 in 2000, it forced Midway to halt development of the franchise and reassess how to bring the series into the 21st century, leading to the release of Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance in 2002. Which is a bit of a backfire, I'd say. Terrible. <laughs> Scorpion wins.